Maika! Are you stuck raving mad? It was like a, I am sure of it, that spirited little dog saved me. Laika saved you in her little space machine. I, I believe the correct term is capsule, General. Don't push your luck any further, Ivan Ivanovich. I fear it might snap. Oh, my apologies, General. In my excitement to explain what I discovered on the far side of the Metagalatica's interiors, I got carried away. And it happened like this. A rocky moon. It's the center of the Earth. The source of all creation, General. A place where time flowed like rivers, and boulders of raw matter rained like comets upon the cratered rock. Another miraculous escape from death. Another happy accident. It was no accident, General. Laika took me there entirely deliberately. I'm sure of that. She continues to be a heroine and a savior and protector of our great nation. Laika died in orbit. No, General, she did not. She is very much alive and happy, and currently living several miles below our feet. Laika is dead, Ivan. She most certainly is not, General. This is the real world, Tavarish. A world where you did not go to the center of the Earth, and Laika died in orbit. In my world, General, Laika is still alive. <sighs> A better world, some may argue. Very well. I will live in your world for a while longer, but time is running out. Ah, yes. Time, General. <laughs> I was just coming to that. There in the distance it stood, enveloped in a mighty time storm. The world clock, General. The beating heart of all history. Axis Mundi, the pillar of the... Not enough to conquer Russia by drilling back to the surface with his magical mind-controlling atomic radio set then. No, General. You see, what if he could fuse little Orpheus directly with the world clock? Then his message would radiate with every tick and every talk. He would not simply be the Tsar. He would be the Tsar of all time, the eternal tyrant. The literal incarnation of everything our glorious revolution stood to overthrow! Sonikiv! Antenny, General! But it was somehow different. I felt no cold, the waves were motionless. Indeed, it was as if I had stepped free of those rivers of time and stood on entirely motionless ground. And there in the distance... What? Debris from Tsarya and tall slave mines had washed up here, almost as if I were meant to find it. And there, amongst it, the winking of steel led me to a blasting cap. And a plan began to form. The terrain was ferocious. Explosive eruptions of fire and heat. Thunderous emissions and lethal gases. Much like your cousin Pavel, perhaps, as a result of consuming all of those stolen eggs. Uh, 
Jones. Aha! General, you have been listening after all! Agartha again? But why? You are stalling, comrade. The clock is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock! Of course! In a flash of inspiration, I understood. It was all wrong, you see, General. That we can agree on. We should never have gone to the center, because without little Orpheus, Toll could not have become the tyrant he had. The rocket drill was his means to reach the world clock, but it was little Orpheus. Agartha again? But why? You are stalling, comrade. The clock is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock! Of course! In a flash of inspiration, I understood. It was all wrong, you see, General. That we can agree on. We should never have gone to the center, because without little Orpheus, Toll could not have become the tyrant he had. The rocket drill was his means to reach the world clock, but it was little Orpheus that enabled him. And the time? Time itself? The world clock itself was determined to make matters right. With a little help from you, of course. <laughs> Merely a simple pawn in a game played upon a cosmic scale, General. But a pawn who understood that he was being given a second chance to grab a chunk of the explosive resin that wondrous city was built upon. And I was back. The mighty river of time roared past me, carrying the weight of the whole of history with it. Even for you, this is a stretch. Our time is almost up. I have to submit my report within the hour. Time, General. Time was nearly up indeed. That ancient and magical river that carried me along was surely moving inevitably towards some kind of end.
enough. No more Pribalo. No more stories. No more lost worlds and space domes. I am full of it. It is nearly midnight, and you have not given me the adequate explanation for the whereabouts of little Orpheus and the atomic bomb. But, General, I, I am about to... to tell you what happened when I finally caught up with the villain Toll. <laughs> I, I do not care, Tavarish! I simply do not care! You have worn me down, and it is time to call a halt to this. I bear no malice, comrade. In many ways, I admire you, but time is running out! Uh, yes, General, yes! Th time! Time! Because it was time itself that suddenly appeared to be on my side! Perhaps the world clock was so impressed with your egg-wearing antics it decided to return you to Plutonia for a second attempt. I would strongly suggest you cut to the chase. The chase, yes. The pursuit of Dol and Little Orpheus. I stood there with the resin fragment in one hand and the blasting cap in the other, and then, just like that, a clock began to ring. The world clock? No, General, an alarm clock. My Slava alarm clock, in fact, given to me by Auntie Marsha. Uh, the, the one who married the beef investigator? The very same. And the moment I saw that clock, I knew what I had to do. Yes, 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 I, I'm waiting. A a bomb, General. A bomb to destroy a bomb. So, you decided to build a bomb, eh? A bomb to destroy Little Orpheus. It was a simple plan, really, General. Yes, you are very fond of your simple plans. It was the last time I was to see those poor enslaved men on my journey. As they scurried in agitation around the base of the rocket drill, now a dreadful weapon of war in the hands of a madman, I was reminded of my mother. Your mother looked like a mienf? That is extremely disrespectful, comrade. No, I meant I was raised by my mother from an early age, of course. My childhood memories of my father were all too brief. You are rambling, comrade Pervalov. Time is running out. Dieni Rezinovi. Time will run out for us all, General, will it not? And it ran out for my father on the shores of Volga. Your father? Fought at Stalingrad? He did, General. So did I. Well, so you see, General. Perhaps we are just the same, you and I. Perhaps we are all just Mankf in the end. possible use in the construction of a bomb could be found in the belly of a giant whale. Were you perhaps planning on using a worm as a fuse? That would be ridiculous, General. I would hate to undermine your otherwise entirely plausible account. You forget, General. The belly of the beast was full of shipwrecks. And on one of them, I was bound to find what I was looking for. Fuse wire. <laughs> Comrade. Yes, you'd forgotten all about the fuse until I reminded you, hadn't you? General, your cynicism is unbecoming to a man of your rank and stature.
clock was now ticking, General. Literally. I was surrounded by time, immersed in it, floating along a river of it on a raft made of history, seeking the next moment of opportunity to hurtle backwards amongst those lost worlds. I am a patient man, Tavarish. I lost three toes in the winter outside Sharkovskaya in 42. A drunken dentist removed two frostbitten toes and one perfectly healthy one. You may therefore consider me a man blessed with an uncommon level of endurance for discomfort. I hate visiting the dentist. My uncle Vanya was a dentist, and he was a deeply strange man, notwithstanding the love he felt for his pigs. His wa- The clock was now ticking, General. Literally. I was surrounded by time, immersed in it floating along a river of it on a raft made of history, seeking the next moment of opportunity to hurtle backwards amongst those lost worlds. I am a patient man, Tavarish. I lost three toes in the winter outside Sharkovskaya in 42. A drunken dentist removed two frostbitten toes and one perfectly healthy one. You may therefore consider me a man blessed with an uncommon level of endurance for discomfort. I hate visiting the dentist. My uncle Vanya was a dentist, and he was a deeply strange man, notwithstanding the love he felt for his pigs. His what? He was a pig dentist, General. He always claimed that the human mouth presented an insufficient challenge. Let me challenge you, comrade. You will tell me what happened to little Orpheus. My patience is exhausted. I am done. But we are nearly there, General. The world clock was shortly to strike again and transport me... And so to the ocean floor, and that strange submerged city, and those poor lost vessels. 
to find a shell case to hold all of my scavenged ingredients, the last piece I needed to construct my bomb. Ah, yes, I have been waiting for this. General? Time, Ivan Ivanovich. Whilst you have rambled on and on about it, I have simply bided mine. I am a patient man, as I have said. Yes, I don't feel I paid enough attention to the story about your toes. Do you have specially made shoes? Enough! Hmm. Now I have your full attention. Indulge me, Tavarish. Explain to me how you made this bomb. General? Your bomb, comrade, that you so brilliantly constructed to destroy little Orpheus. Tell me how you made it. The type of detail that should present no problem to a man who is actually capable of building a bomb, which I suspect would be an entirely different man to one who cheated on his entrance exams for the cosmonaut program. Uncharacteristically silent, comrade. Cat, got your tongue? If I may, General, perhaps just a minute or two to gather my thoughts? Mm -mm -mm. There are precious few minutes left. We have reached our conclusion, I think. Yes. Yes, we have, General. Uh, I gazed up at the world clock and knew I had arrived at my destination. Whatever lay inside would see my journey end one way or another. But I had no idea of the marvels that awaited me. And it... The bomb, Ivan Ivanovich! Tell me how you built the bomb! It, it was a wonderful sight, the mm. world... It is two minutes to midnight, Ivan. It is time to end the story. <laughs>